Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 583. Weight Loss, What Medications Are Available? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects because it is one of the subjects that I talk about every day with my patients, and that is weight loss. So one of the downsides of being in a, um, an advanced country with uh, people who um, have jobs that are not physical labor jobs in general is that we have too much weight, we have too much fat, we don't move around enough, we eat too much, we have plenty of food. We don't have a shortage of food in general in this country. So that makes us, um, I guess, fat but not happy. And most of my patients who come in are over 40. They're looking at anti-aging, they're looking at, at, they want to feel better, they want to look better, they don't wanna look old, they don't wanna feel old, and they wanna be healthy. So integral in this whole process of helping someone become healthier as they get older is teaching them how to eat, teaching them how to exercise for them as an individual. I have to say that all the fad diets in the world are not going to necessarily help you as an individual. There are many, there were many diets out there in the past as I remember the uh, cabbage soup diet. Cabbage soup diet worked for maybe part of the population. You don't know if that's you or not until you've done it to see if you gain weight or lose weight on it. But many people actually gained weight by just eating cabbage soup. Now, that seems the opposite of what should happen, and it was. That's not what was intended by the, um, by the creator of the cabbage soup diet. I didn't do it, but I had many patients who did, and they came in and asked me why they were gaining weight. At the time, I didn't understand that, but I do now. And that was because for that individual, that particular diet was the opposite of what they should be doing. Some of the people that gained weight on the cabbage soup diet were people who needed a lot of protein to sustain their muscles and to build muscle and to give them energy. And that is a genetically programmed type of metabolism that requires protein for energy. So the, those f folks who didn't, do well on the cabbage soup diet would do well on a protein diet. We, when I discovered that and started looking at people's genetics to see what kind of food they should take in, I based it on the blood type diets. So in individually, when I'm trying to, um, trying to decide on a diet for a particular patient that's in front of me, I know their blood type. I usually go over what the best foods are for their blood type because that's a genetic need. We have certain foods that we need based on our genetics. Now, when we look at other types of diets, some diets say all you have to do is sit there and take this pill. Well, I can tell you that that doesn't work. If you just take a pill and you do nothing else, if you don't eat properly for your genetics, if you don't exercise properly for your body type, if you don't drink enough water, if you eat one type of food but nothing else, you are not going to lose and sustain blood, uh, uh, excuse me, weight loss. You are going to be maybe lighter on the scale, you may lose water, but you are not going to lose fat. It takes a what I call a parallel effort of everything, eating properly for who you are, exercising properly for who you are. For example, O blood types need to exercise every single day. If you don't exercise every single day, then you're not going to lose weight. You have to, and it's good for your brain as well. So you have to take the proper supplements or the proper additions to your nutrition. And you also have to have someone explain the different types of exercises. 
uh, that you should use. Some people do better with short bursts of exercise. They have fast twitch muscles. They, they sprint. They do short uh, episodes of exercise, like interval training. That's what gets them to lose fat. Some people are long distance runners. They have slow twitch muscles and they have to run marathons. They have to run for a long time on the treadmill. They have to be on a bicycle for hours a day to actually bring their cells into a fat losing type of um, mode or they have to increase what each cell burns. Now, having said all of this about diet, um, I want to discuss what we do with our weight loss program. We do all of those things that I just discussed per patient based on the one patient. What, you, what I decide for you is based on your blood type, your blood work, and everything you've told me about your successful diets in the past, as well as your body type and, and the type of food you're supposed to eat. So that is in our weight loss program. But that's not all. When you have a weight loss program that's actually going to work, you usually need a jump start. And a jump start and maybe even a sustained type of medication to help you lose weight for your particular problem. Now, um, I find that if I just use diet and exercise with my patients, then they don't get the um, effect that they're looking for quick enough for them to sustain their ability to eat right and exercise right every single day. They need to have some reinforcement. And eating right and exercising properly are just too slow. So I add a type of medication that is good for their metabolism. And I have to determine that based on all the information I know about them. This is not a one size fits all. In fact, in my practice, I found that one size never fits all. And since I'm five foot three and weigh 135 pounds, nothing that says one size fits all has ever fit me. So this is one of those things where it's the same deal. It's not going to fit you if we don't make it particularly um, a, a specific diet just for you. So in this, in this decision making, that my nurse practitioners and, and Dr. Sullivan and I do, we also look at something to help you speed on your weight loss. And those are the medications that we have as prescriptions. They're all prescription medications. And these things actually do stimulate your metabolism. Then what I can expect is if you do all the other things and you take this medication, you will w lose weight faster. You will get more positive reinforcement. You'll know in your head that it's working. And then you will follow my guidelines for weight and, and exercise. Maintenance is a whole different thing. That happens after you've hit your ideal weight. And we have to go through that on a, on a different um, health cast. So to comparing the medications for each patient is, um, it's really a medical decision making. That's why you have to go to see a physician or a nurse practitioner. Uh, <clears throat> one of the medications that we have used since the 1960s to increase weight loss is called what we used to friend, say in the uh, girl world, diet pill. Well, diet pills are really, what we're saying is an amphetamine. An amphetamine is the same type of drug we use for ADHD, but it is a drug at a different dose and a different type to use for decreasing your appetite and stimulating your metabolism. So it is a, an upper. It, is, it makes your heart race. It makes your um, energy go up. You may want to clean the whole house on the first dose. As you're not used to it, it will give you a lot more energy at the beginning than it does two weeks later. So they are medications like uh, Dexedrine, Adderall, any of, any of the um, amphetamines that are used for ADD can be used in a different dose for weight loss. We like to use fent Phentermine, and Phentermine is, has been around since the 1960s. In those days, it got a bad reputation because doctors just handed it out to everybody and said, here, take this, you'll lose weight. Now, sometimes that happened, and in the 1960s, women were um, 
basically smoking, drinking a lot, and taking diet pills. That's not a good combination, and I don't suggest that for anyone. But women lost a lot of weight, and then they'd go off of it, and then they gain it back, and they go back on the pill. Because they didn't learn how to eat and exercise as a routine in their life, and they still had bad habits. So that doesn't work either. However, when we use uh, these, am these amphetamine diet pills, we generally use it to assist what you're already doing. All of the good habits that we want you to develop, this will make them go faster. Now, are these right for everybody? No, they're not right for everybody. Amphetamines can't be used in people with atri uh, atrial fib or other heart arrhythmias. They can't be used in people who have heart disease. They shouldn't be used with people who have uncontrolled blood pressure because they can make all of those things worse. So we do not prescribe those for our patients who have those problems. That's why it's important that we know all of your medical background and the, all the other things that you have wrong with you. I've had people say, I don't know why you want to know if, I've, if I have high blood pressure or if, I've, if I take this particular thing for gout or whatever. Well, I have to know that because a lot of medications interact with each other and I have to know if I, it's safe to put you on a particular medication. And I have to know if your medical situation is going to be at low risk when I give you a diet pill. So this particular diet pill is very important. It works great if you take it with all of these other parallel habit changes. It works wonderfully, and you can sustain weight loss with that. So those are pills that usually people take once or twice a day, depending on how fast your metabolism is. And there is, a, there is a potential for becoming addicted to them. So we are very careful. We can't write more than five months worth at a time. And then you have to have a new handwritten prescription. It is a c controlled substance. So not everyone can write these prescriptions for you. And you have to be careful not to share them with anyone. That is not a good idea with any medication, but especially with this. So that is... Um, one of the medications, the oldest and the most uh, long-term medication for weight loss, it's the only thing we had for many years for our patients. Um, <clears throat> it's also called, by the way, an appetite suppressant. So the um, next medication I'd like to talk to you about is now over-the-counter. It's called Orlistat, O-R-L-I-S-T-A-T. Came out in the 80s. I remember prescribing this for people for weight loss. Um, it basically works by taking the fat out of your food and not processing it into energy, but putting it into your intestines. Well, what that does is cause you to have fatty diarrhea. In fact, some people couldn't hold it to go to the bathroom. They would have, they would have incontinence of stool and they'd have disgusting, fatty, yellow diarrhea all over, and that is not helpful. If taken properly with a low-fat diet, it generally will help you lose calories from, from your food. Now, for those of you who can't decrease the number of calories you eat a day, this does help, but it does not stimulate your metabolism. It doesn't make you burn calories faster. It just takes a bad habit, like eating too much fat and carb in your diet, and turns it into something that, that gives you um, a punishment if you don't follow that diet. So knowing what Orlistat is, seeing it, seeing it over the counter, you have to be aware that you can't be on a high fat diet. No ribs, um, no um, creme brulee, no, I mean, anything that has a lot of fat in it, like ice cream, that can cause you to have this fatty diarrhea. It does work if you can manage it, but but honestly, you need to learn to eat better, not just use a pill to get rid of what you're overeating with. So to me, this is the wrong message a physician would send to a patient. Um, but it's over the counter. You can actually try it yourself, by yourself. And uh, oh, and I forgot all, all of the terrible gas that it can cause that our patients complained about. So if you're willing to um, try that, you can actually uh, do that yourself. Then there is um, the, the last medication I'm going to talk about today, and I'm going to continue this into another health cast for the, the newest 
um, the newest medications for weight loss. But the last two medications I'm going to talk about today, one is called Topamax. It's a seizure drug. People use it for migraines. They also use it to control seizures. But they combine that with an amphetamine. It works. Once again, an amphetamine can't be given to people with high blood pressure, heart disease, and arrhythmias. It can't be given to somebody who has anxiety because it might cause more anxiety. But for those people who take, amph take amphetamines for weight loss and they no longer work or they don't work at all just for their metabolism, we add Topamax. So Topamax plus um, fen Phentermine then is a very effective way to decrease your appetite, increase your metabolism, and actually lose weight very quickly. Now, doesn't mean you don't have to do all the other things. It just means it helps you get positive reinforcement from all of the things that you are doing. Now, some people don't do well on Topamax. Um, they may not sleep if they're taking it. You have to take it at bedtime and you take the fent fentramine in the morning. Um, you also may have um, anxiety issues with Topamax. It may make you tired. It may make you unable to think clearly. So if we get this feedback from our patients, we have to try something else. But it is a very effective way to lose weight. Um, <clears throat> Many of the people who have success with this drug combination would not have success with any of the previous things that I discussed alone. So that is one of the things that I can give to my patients who have already, who have either failed or used amphetamines, diet pills in the past and been successful, but they stopped working, or in people who just need more help with their appetite suppressant, suppression. Now, um, the last one I'd like to discuss today is an old medication that we use all the time at BioBalance for weight control. This is called metformin. Metformin extra, extra strength or uh, extended release is a metformin that is a pill that works with um, basically eating your food. You take it with a meal. If it's taken any other time, XR is not going to work for the next 24 hours. It'll just come right back out the, your stool. You'll see it. So you have to take it with the food because you need all of the enzymes of a meal to help you metabolize that medication and make it work. It, it is generally considered a diabetic drug. The first diabetic drug that you go on when you have diabetes to help you become insulin sensitive. So once again, we've talked about this before. <clears throat> Adult onset diabetes, the one that makes you gain weight, <coughs> is a problem, excuse me, <coughs> based on insulin resistance. Your insulin is produced when you eat, especially carby foods. If you have a history of eating a lot of carby foods, you have an overreaction of your insulin. Your insulin goes way up, and then it is meant to take the blood sugar and carry it into your cells and and be like a truck carrying blood sugar into the cell to make energy. If you're insulin resistant, your body's become resistant to the insulin itself, so when that truck gets to the cell, it can't go in. It bounces off, and it's gotta do something with, with your blood sugar so it makes fat. That's insulin resistance and the basis of uh, adult onset diabetes. The way this drug works is it makes the cells in your body more sensitive. It opens up the pathway for the truck to take the blood sugar into your cells and burn calories. That means your cells are getting energy and they're making heat and they're also not making fat out of what you eat. So this is a way to make yourself more sensitive, your cells more sensitive to blood sugar and insulin and to keep your insulin from overreacting to everything you eat. So slowly your insulin response comes down and your sensitivity goes up. It works another way as well, and that is that when you take it with food, it carries out a lot of the carbohydrate in your food and puts it into your intestines and you poop it out, which is nice, and it doesn't give you fatty diarrhea. So that's also nice. In, um, in this way, th this drug is the 
cheapest, easiest, can be used by most people, and especially by people who are pre-diabetic or um, insulin resistant or diabetic. So that's the first drug I use on people with that particular profile. Uh, it is usually covered by insurance, unlike most, um, most diet drugs, and therefore is affordable for you, which is um, one of the factors in choosing your um, weight loss drug, because many of them are so expensive that no one can stay on them or even try them because we're talking $1,000 for six weeks. So this is a, a drug that will only co cost you your copay and will work, and it is making you healthier at the same time, not just helping you lose weight, but helping you prevent the onset of diabetes. So those are the, the historical weight loss drugs that we have used, why we use them, and who we use them for. Next week, we'll talk about the new diabetic drugs, which are, excuse me, the new weight loss drugs, which are amazing and work really well and um, have really given me a new tool for people who didn't respond to these four, first four medications. So please join us next week and hear about the new diabetic, or excuse me, new weight loss drugs. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.